Hey guys, it's Jackie from Jack Gets Lost Down the Book Hole, and this video I'm about to make here, it's not, it's more about, this is a, it's a TBR for this month and for June and for however long it takes me to read all these books, but I might not even finish all these books because this is more like a possible TBR as I've done before. Where it's books that I'm thinking about reading and books that I need to continue at some point and books that I need to read soon because two of them I might give to my best friend Terry and one of and two of them I need to give back to my sister and brother in law. So I need I feel like I've had them for over a year and I feel like it's about time I read them and give them and gave them back. One thankfully one of the books that they gave me I I had just finished and that was the Joy Luck Club. So I was able to finish that one. So when they come at the end of May, I'll be able to at least give her back that book. But I don't know about the other the other two. Especially the nonfiction one, because nonfiction takes me so long to read. Well, although, depending on... If it's a nonfiction memoir type book, then yeah, it won't take me as long. But these, a lot, mo all these books are either books I was thinking about or, like I said, books that I need to give back to someone or I'm going to give to someone. And these are books that I've been holding off reading them and I need to read them. So not so it's kind of a TBR and it's kind of not. It, it depends. Okay, so, well, first, I'm, I mean, so, um, the first book I, that I, can reach because all these are kind of just thrown in a, in several piles. Um, is the Secret History History by Donna Tart? I am very far into this book. I'm on the second part of the book, and I'm in chapter six. And the, it's not that hard of a read. The writing style is very easy to follow. And yeah, it's minuscule print. Well, not minuscule, but I'm exa I mean, of course, I exa exaggerate when I say minuscule, but it's. Like, see, the print's not terrible. I mean, it's the, I mean, it's, and it's, like, it's not as detailed and descriptive, and it's not as dry, or at least I don't think so. So, I mean, it's not that hard for me to read. It's just, it's a long book, and when it comes to books that are, like, kind of contemporary, not like YA contemporary, but, mo like, adult contemporary, where they're set in modern times, and they're really long, <laughs> And they're books that, you know, aren't, like, like, you know, as fast-paced as, like, a young adult is, then those will take me a little longer to read. Especially if it's not, like, the fantasy genre. You know, the, if it's fantasy, then that really, that helps. Not always, because, I mean, Game of Thrones is, our Song of Ice and Fire series is fantasy, but then again, it doesn't, but even that book takes me, you know, those books have taken me forever to read. Um, but I definitely need to finish this book. I, like I said, I'm, you know, I have a good chunk to go, but it's not, you know, I'm farther along in this one than some of the other books that I've been, that I started and I still haven't finished them. So I gotta continue this one. And this next one is a book, is one of the books that I need to get back to my sister. Um, this is by the same author who wrote The Joy Luck Club. This is called The Kitchen God's Wife. I don't know anything about this book. All I know is that it's about, you know, the Chinese culture, and I'm guessing a Chinese, a woman that's Chinese, and about her family, and they probably, like, and, you know, from the first page, it sounds like they owned a little shop. Um, so I don't know. I But I definitely want to read more of Amy Tan's books. But either way, I need to read this one because i got to give it back to my sister because I've had it for over a year now. And like I said, I don't know anything about it. I don't... Um, so I don't... So I can't really tell you much about it. I just... It's something... Okay, well, so, yeah, it's about... China again, um, because she's one of those authors that, um, the, what's the word? Um, when you're an author who writes about, like, whatever, when you're an author who writes about your own culture or your own disabilities, um, there's a word for that, I can't remember, it will come to me, I'm sure, after, probably after I make this video, um, 
And then I need to read This is Winter. Now, obviously, I started this one. I've already read the first three books. And I need to, um, and I read Ferris not that long ago, like last year, I think. Or it might have, or it might have been 2016. Um, I read, I read that one already, so, I, you know, I don't remember and I probably need to reread it. But I'm not gonna, I'm gonna finish Winter first and then reread that one to refresh my memory. Because personally, I don't think it's gonna hurt, hurt you, your enjoyment of this book if you don't read Ferris until after you read until after you read Winter. But, I mean, of course there are things in Ferris that kind of explain certain aspects of this book. Like, you get background on the villain. You get her origin story and everything. Why she's... What has made her is, you know... Of course, even... Even without knowing, you know... Like, the bad... The villainess, Lavana, is still pretty crazy, even back then, before she officially became the evil queen of this story. But yeah, I've already... Uh, so I'm due for... To continue my reread re -read of this, because I want to finish that one. But I'm also trying to fin get books that won't take me too long to get through this month, because I want to read at least mo more than four books. I want to have accomplished and finished reading more than four books in the month, but I don't know if that will happen. And I know it's not about that. It shouldn't be about how many. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. But I just, I mean, I do have a sense of putting pressure on myself, especially now that I'm aware I'm doing the good, I've been doing the Goodreads challenge, and I don't want, and no, I'm not, no, it's not driving me so crazy that I'm going to stop doing the Goodreads challenge, you know, but there still is a sense of pressure, and I'm not, and I don't want to be one of those people that, and if you want to do this, that's fine, I'm not judging, I'm not, you know, judging you or anything like that, but I don't want to be one of those people that just quotes one book on their TBR, because that's too easy, I feel like. I mean, I mean, not to be on your Goodreads challenge. That, to me, is too easy. I want to at least, like, put five or ten books. Or twenty books. On um, my, you know, I know that it means I'll probably put, I'll put pressure on myself. But, you know, it's not driving me crazy. Yes, it, you know, I can't settle on a book. And I'm trying to read books that I'll, I know I'll get done as well as the really long books. But I'm still, I'm still going to stick with it. I'm not going to stop doing the Goodreads challenge. So, yes, I want to do this one. Um, I mean, need to continue reading this one. It's going to be a really long video. Um, this is another book. This is actually the... It's about... Um, this is actually about our Phantom Eric's background. And I'm talking about the Phantom from Phantom of the Opera. This is kind of his backstory. His origin story. And this one makes me sorry. I just... Like, our bookstore is, like... You know, it doesn't have a lot of the super popular books. I mean, it will have them sometimes, but it has to be like if people here in this town have read them and then they decide they don't want to keep them and give them to the used bookstore. And I found some, you know, I found some that were here. Like, um, I saw Song of Achilles there, which I still have not bought. But, um, it's... But this is like the backstory of and lead all the way up to the events in the act in the original Phantom of the Opera. So I wanna I wanna read this and then this is one of the books I want to give to my best friend Terry. I think she would really like this. She's very into romance novels. Um and she the Phantom, the way he is, at least in the Broadway show, because I've never read the original book. I almost bought the original book though at the same bookstore. But it was hardback and I was running low on money and you know, even though the price is really cheap, I still didn't have a lot of dollars in my wallet. Um, so I almost bought, I did almost buy it, but, um, so, and maybe if it's still there, I might buy it, or I might just wait until, but it was a good addition because it was hardback and large print, which really helps with books like this. So I want to get this one read. And then one after I read, I'm going to give it back to her. I mean, I'm not back to her. I'm going to give it to her if she's interested. And this is also about... This is another book that I want to give to her. Nefertini. This is another book I bought at the used bookstore. And I know that she really is into Egypt. Especially ancient Egypt. And so I thought this would be... You know, I was kind of interested in this. It sounded like something I would like. 
And I know that she likes this kind of stuff as well. So I figured I'd read it myself first. So I have to read it before July, because she's going to come and visit me in July. And then I'm going to... Oh, it has one of the name in it. Um... So then I'm gonna I'm going to read it and it doesn't the this one those it's not small print it's not minuscule print which really helps it's regular print, um so but I mean who knows maybe I'll maybe I'll like it enough to be like yeah I don't want to give it to you this is, I'm gonna keep it <laughs> but either way I know that she likes it I know that she likes Egypt Egyptian so I'll give it to her once I'm done reading it unless I really really like it and want to keep it. So those are the two ones I'm going to give that I have to read before July so I can decide if I want to give them to her or not. Either that or I'm going to have to wait another year before I see her again. <laughs> okay, so the next... Um, this is one of the books that I brought with me when we were staying with my sister during one of our trips. And this is about Julie and this is, yes, it is about the Julie Andrews of Mary Poppins fame and Sound of Music fame. I have been want you know, I was always a fan of Sound of Music and Mary Poppins. So it was like, you know what, I, you know, when I found out she had a biography, a memoir, I was like, you know what, I want to read it. I want to, I want to know more about her. And I also want to know more about Christopher Palmer as well, so I might get that one. But when it comes to actors, sometimes they, you know, sometimes I'm not, you know, I'm more interested, I mean, you know, scratch that. Um, just ignore that. So, um, but I have been wanting to read their, their memoirs, so I went ahead and bought, I finally found this one at the Barnes & Noble at my grandmother's, where the state where my grandmother lives, and I bought it. It was the only one there, so I was like, shit, I'm gonna, I gotta grab this one now. So I went ahead and bought it. Unfortunately, it was kind of expensive. It was like 16 U.S. dollars. So it says it's 18 in Canada. <laughs> So I was like, you know what, I, I don't care, I'm, I have a, you know, I need to spend, I need to use my gift card, use that money, so I went ahead and bought it. And that's also when I got Conjuring of Light. So I want to continue this one, because I did start it when I was at my sister's house. And like I said, I have an easier time with memoirs than most, not than regular nonfiction. At least that's what I've discovered as of last year. Okay, so next, I this this is a gift. I need to continue with this one. I even started a Goodreads group on reading the book, but I wasn't very good at running that group because I have not read it in a while. It's a lot easier to watch the mini series or watch the movie that just came out than read this than read the book, because this is over a thousand pages. I mean, I have done it before, but it's also again, it's not it's not fantasy, and sometimes fantasy and like non fantasy books are a little harder for me to read when it's this size. Um, but I definitely need to get back into reading this either way, whether I can get back into group mode or not. And that is one of my, my first Stephen King and my favorite Stephen King app so far. Because I've read a lot more Stephen King now, which, oh, that reminds me, I also got to read, I have a copy of The Eyes of the Dragon, which is one of his fantasy books, so I got to read that one as well. But I forgot to grab the one, and I'm not getting the grabbing that one to waste because I'm already this video is already probably long. Um. Then I gotta read. I have. To, I have start. I did start this book. But people keep talking about this series and Brandon Sanderson, and I still have not gotten it back into reading this book. So I need to get back into it and read. Get more of it read. Um. Especially, you know, and I gotta focus on this book. Keep my attention mostly on this book. So, that one is another one I gotta read. Um, I also, this was another one that I started, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Another author that I constantly hear about on BookTube. And I have been wanting to read him for a long time. And this is the only book of his that I have, so... I need to get it, get up on this. And again, another book that I started, the first, like, first chapter of it, and I still haven't continued with it. So I gotta read this one as well. And I really hope that both those authors become autobi authors for me, Neil Gaiman and Brandon Sanderson. Because people talk about how much they love them, and 
Of course, I'm also very easy to please anyway. I mean, I have things I won't read and stuff, but mostly I'm pretty easy. Um, this is another one I got at the, cha at the Gibbons bookstore in our town. Um, this is about um, the war of the, the famous War of the Roses with the two families and um, the Lancasters and the, and the Yorks. And this actually, I know that this inspired the rivalry between the Starks and the Lannisters in the Song of Ice and Fire series. This is one of the things that inspired Martin with his book. And that's also kind of what I want to write. I want to write books that are inspired by actual history. But, of course, our fantasy world. And that's what I'm kind of, this one, the story that I've been working on for, like, several years that I've barely written anything for, but I have the ideas in my head, um, is kind of where I want to go with that. Not medieval history, but more like 1700s American history, like, during the American Revolution kind of history. That's what I want, I want to, you know, write my fantasies about. So I have the ideas, it's just not going anywhere at the moment. But yeah, this is, an, this is, I want to read this one, and I definitely want to read more, more literature like this. Although, funnily enough, one of the books I got rid of is based on the Arthurian legend, and, but I also have Mist of Avalon, which is from the perspective of Morgan Le Fay, I believe, the women of the Arthur legend. So I'm gonna, you know, I have that, and I got rid, but I got rid of the one story that my one of my friends has recommended to me. But I had had it for a long time, and I still ain't got around to it. And you know, I've been trying to donate some of my books so I can buy more books and make room for my of the new books I buy. So I decided I put it, I put it to be unhauled. But anyway, um, so I want to get to this one soon. Like I said, these are possible books I might possibly read this month, or I might read. Like, next month, in June, I don't know. But they're ones I'm thinking about. So these next two, I, I already, this next one, I already read his other book, 1984. And this is George Orwell Animal Farm. Which, by the way, this, I love this edition. Because it looks like one of those, like, a children's book. And I think that's really cool. So, I mean, although I probably wouldn't have been smarter if I did buy the paperback edition, the right... But I just, I love this edition. And I'm not one of those people who, I need to feel guilty if I buy more than one edition of a book. Unless it's given to me. So, um, and I guess that kind of stems from my parents and my sister. And they're all, they're all minimalist. Well, not my dad so much, but my mom and my sister are minimalist. So, it's a war between wanting to not wanting to be a minimal, minimalist and having some of the habits that, you know, minimalists should have. Not that I really do that. I'm not a minimalist, believe me, I'm not. But, you know, there's little things like, I don't understand the whole having multiple copies of a book. I don't. Unless someone gives it to me. Or if it's like a special edition. So this is Animal Farm. It's about politics via animals. And I just, I want to read this book because I love 1984. And I like how it did not have a happy ending, by the way. So I thought that's really interesting. I want to read this one. Um, and then I I need to read this. You know, I've had this for, like, since 2014, probably, or 13. Or, no, no, maybe 2015. And I just, I need to, you know, I need to get it. I need to get on it and read it again. I mean, because I did read a little bit of it. Um, because I do want to get more into graphic novels, especially the superhero ones. And because, I mean, I was always interested in the whole Gotham Batman universe and everything. And I love Gotham. And I recently did a Gotham Gush video of the show on Fox. So I, and, you know, I need to read this. This is about the female villains of Gotham, the female characters. Um, Harley Quinn, um, Catwoman, aka Selena Kyle, and um, Poison Ivy, or Ivy, well, 
Ivy, I can't, Ivy Pepper. Well, that's what she's calling Gotham. I don't think that's her real name originally, but that's what she's calling Gotham. So I need to read this. I have two graphic novels. Well, I have three technically. One of them is a volume. One of them is from Alice through the, through the Looking the Looking Glass War series, which is based on Alice in Wonderland. And then there's this one. So I need to read some. I need to start reading those. Okay, so I just started reading. I love Kate Morton as a historical author. She's one of my favorite historical fiction authors. And I need, you know, I had, I used to have those books, but then I donated the books to my best friend, one of my best, my best friend, Larissa. So I decided to rebuy them when I spotted them at the Gibbons bookstore, used bookstore. And I remember this one was being, this one being one of my favorites, you know, the second, my second favorite. So I decided to go ahead and rebuy it, and I put it on my TBR as a book I want to read next. So, and I know I will get through these really quickly. I love, I love her writing style. I love her books. They're all kind, they're all mysteries, and they go back and forth between the present and the past. Like, something happened a long time ago in the past, and the character in the present is trying to figure out what happened and trying to understand. And she's always, a lot of times, she's connected to the people from the past and their backstory somehow. Like, she's related to them, or she's interacting with some, or she has a connection with someone that is related to them. So I and she's all basically trying to find out about the events and what happened and why it happened. So I want to read this one as well. Okay, so next, this is a book that one of my newer favorite booktubers, Jennifer from Insert Literary Insert Literary Pun here, she was talking about this book. And I remember seeing this book at my brother, at my sister and brother-in-law's house. It's one of, I think it was one of, I don't know if it was one of his books or my sister's book. I can't remember what he said. But it's about the Civil War. And I've been getting really into historical, I mean, I've always been into historical fiction, but I've been really getting into, like, the American Revolution in the, in the Civil War. So, and I have another book in this pile, I believe, that's about that as well, that I want to read. But I want to read this one, which is about, I think, the Battle of Gettysburg. I don't know. I, don't know. I, want, to, I want to say it's Gettysburg. Yeah, yeah, it's about the Battle of Gettysburg. And through the eyes of, you know, like, the, shoulder, the soldiers. Like, I think it's both fictional and original characters created by the author. I don't, I don't know. But, yeah, I want to read this one. And then this is one that I've had for a while, for a long time now. But I was also kind of uh, trying not to read fantasy, and this is a fantasy book. So I was trying to mix it up a little bit and not read fantasy again and read something else. But, um... I've had this for a long time now, and I need to read it. Uh, I, I mean, I really hope it's not a series, because then I'm gonna be like, now I'm gonna, because then I'm gonna have to read the next by the next book. Um, I'm hoping it's a standalone. I mean, the problem is that a lot of fantasy are not standalones, so I want to read this one as well. Okay, that's gonna go a lot faster because it's this video is getting pretty long, so um. This next book is also about the Civil War. This is a separate country. My and Larissa had this book. That was the first time I saw it. And then I remember um I remember thinking it was another book actually. But that it wasn't this one, but then I'm, you know, I saw it one day and was like, I think that's the book that Larissa has. This is another book about the Civil War. It's well, it's about after the Civil War and how it affects this one particular general. And I think it's based on a true story. And this general, I guess he did something during the Civil War and that kind of ruined his reputation. And now he's trying, but he's still trying to find a wife, you know, that will, and, um, that will accept him and for, despite his tattered reputation, 
And he does, and it says that in the summary, in the description on the back, and it's about their marriage and their life. Um, this is, I bought his other, I saw the other book he wrote, this author wrote, The Widow of the South, which is also about the same, same time period. I saw that at the used bookstore, so I went ahead and bought that as well. So I need to read this one. Um, I love this shade of green. This is such a pretty shade of green. Um, so I need to read that. Because, I mean, that's one of the ones I want to read. Um, next, this is another one I started while I was staying with my sister. Around the same time I was reading Home. This is, I've heard a lot about this late, this book a lot lately. It's a liter. I don't know if it's considered a modern classic or if it's a liter, or if it's a literary. I don't know. But so far, what I know is about this woman, um, who is telling about the, about her and her family living in a literal castle about their lives and stuff. Something like that. And, I mean, I've read a little bit of, of it, but not much. I do want to continue this one. Um, and then, this this next one here is a book that I saw the movie version. Um, this is Where I Leave You. It's about, it's a family saga. Um, the patriarch of the family has just died. And it's about the family, all the, the kids are getting together and getting back together and hanging out for the first time in years. All be because of this, because their father died, and you know the our our narrator has just his wife has cheated on him with his with his boss, and he's trying to keep that secret from his siblings and his mother. But of course, you know, and I know what happens in the because I've seen the movie. And it's a really good movie. I really enjoy it. So I I wanted to read the book. So I saw the book at the bookstore and I decided, you know what, I'm going to buy it. And I remember my dad liked it too, loved that movie too, because he loves the actors in that movie. And I think he really enjoyed the movie, but I don't know if he'll read the book. I like, last Christmas, I, last Christmas I bought him a book and he still has not read it. But my mom kind of pointed out that my dad is a little different about books. He finds them a little boring. I know, blasphemous and how can you find a book boring, but... He's not, you know, into, I mean, he does like things like history and stuff, but. Um, okay, so, this next is, oh, crap, this video is getting really long. I hope I'll be able to upload this, or I'm going to have to re refilm it. Okay, so I got this whole trilogy, and I have been wanting to buy this trilogy, so I finally got all three books. So I might read this one this, this month. Because it will be quick to get through. And I feel like reading something like this for my birthday month. Because May is my birthday. I actually, that's when I finally got around to reading Akamath. Last year was in May, during my birthday month. And also because Akamath was coming out in May. So I'm, you know, wanted to get it done. Well, actually I read it in April and I finished it in the first week of May. And then I bought Akamath. So I'm reading, um... So yeah, and I am so I'm glad that all three. I find when I finally got around to this getting buying this tri this trilogy is when the trilogy was complete. So, um, and it, it's complete to the point where the paperback edition of the last book is out, so I didn't have to buy the hardback to have all three books. So I want to read. I think I'm thinking about reading this one. I think and I'm hoping that this will be. Oh, there's like sixty seven chapters. Well, either way, I'm hoping this will be a quick read, despite the length of chapters. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, so I'm hoping to, I might read this one this month. Um, and like all these other books, I don't know if I'll read them this month or not. Probably the two that I need to get back to my sister and brother-in-law, I probably should read those this month. Because like I said, they're coming Memorial Day weekend. So I want to give them, be able to give them back more than just the one book. Um, this is one that I keep thinking about reading because, again, this is another book where I have all the books and the series and the trilogy. And this is the Century Trilogy. It's Ken Follett, and he's a very popular author. 
in the literature, in the literary department. And I even wanted to read this, and I think I might enjoy this one more so than the, um, his other series, starting with the Pillar, the Kingsbridge Chronicle um, trilogy, which is starts with the Pillars of the Earth, and then World Without End, and then the last book just came out, Column of Fire, I think it's called. Um, but I think I might enjoy this because this is 20th century, so we're dealing with the early 1900s and all that, all that good stuff. Um, but I want to, so I'm keep thinking, okay, I'm going to start this book. The problem is the size, even though the print is actually large, is average print. It's good size print for the, but it's also a long book and it's a big book. So it's not one of those ones I can keep in my purse whenever I go somewhere. So, um, so yeah, I need to start, I been keep thinking about starting this one, but I still have not got around to it. Um... Okay, so this one, um, this next one is a short story collection by Kelly Link. Um, she writes a lot of magical realism stories. And I've already read some of them, you know, obviously I've read the first couple of stories, so I need to read the next one. And it's short stories, so I figure it will be good to, you know, to keep my, keep going, the month going with my reading. So I um figure it'll be good to throw in a couple short stories there so I can have a lot I can say I've read a lot more than just four books. But I'm just not one of those people who can read like ten books in a month. I can't do that. And it's my own fault. I mean I'm one of those people I can't just read to all day. I do other stuff. I watch T V, I go on the internet. This next one I finally got around to reading Crooked Kingdom. I read the first, I read Six Clothes Lot last fall, and I, I still hadn't gone around to Crooked Kingdom, so I finally decided to read it. I read the first couple, I read the first two chapters. I'm not done with, um, to the, um, yesterday, I believe. So now I, so I finally got around to it, so I finally, and I cannot read to continue. You know, and now I'm starting reading. I remember how I got hooked into the Six of Crows, and now, so I'm gonna continue this one. This one is probably one I'm definitely gonna read this month. I'm gonna continue reading this one. Um, this one about John Adams is the book that I got for my brother-in-law. It is a nonfiction biography by David McCullough. He's a really well-known author who writes this kind of stuff. Historic, you know, writes historical biographies, biographies based on historical figures. Um, so I need to, I need to continue this so I can give it back to my brother-in-law, and then I can read the other book he wrote, 1776, which is about 1776. Um, what happened back then and stuff. So I want to read this one, and I mean, I need to read it so I can finally give it back to my brother-in-law. And, um... These are the two books I need to continue. Gone with the Wind. This is one I started as a bunny ring with my best friend Terry. Um, of course, she's still finishing up Frankenstein, I think. Or maybe she just finished it and she can't. She hasn't gone around to reading Gone with the Wind yet. But I just got to chapter two. So, I mean, this is my second reading of it. So, I mean, granted, it might be like with... and Well, well if I'm doing a bunny ring, then that should help. That should help motivate me to keep going. The same thing with this one. I'm already. I only got to book three my first time I read the series. I got halfway through book three, and then I took a long break and never continued it. So I decided to can go back and start over. So I've already read A Game of Thrones. Now I need to read this one, The Clash of Kings, which I have already. I've already started. So and I'm doing a buddy read to help me actually be motivated to read this. Well, next, this is okay. So the, this next one is a classic um that i was constantly that um words of a reader i think yeah that's her name words of a reader leslie talks about this book a lot is one of her favorite modern classics so i need to read this i don't know actually i don't know if it's a regular classic or a classic or a modern classic i don't remember but she's one of my favorite booktubers so she was always talking about this book and how great it is so I decided, you know, I need to read it. 
So I'm going, this was, it was actually something given to me, a book given to me by our friends, um, the same, the doctor who gives, who I've told, talked about in my videos before, who has given me a lot of books before, and, um, so gave me this one, and I want, I need to read it. Especially since Words of a Reader, Leslie has always talked about that book. Okay, next. So I need to read this one. This is actually not a booktuber recommendation, but a friend of mine on Facebook recommended this book. The Ugly Series. This is the first book, and I want to read it so I can decide, you know, am, do I want to continue and read the rest of the trilogy? Or, well, it's not a trilogy. It's actually, I think there are like four books in it. Um... And he's the same, I read his other series, the Leviathan series by him, and I liked it, and I liked his writing style. So then, um, I wanted to read it, and I, I remember liking Hunger Games, and this is kind of the same dystopian world type story, so I want to read this one to decide if I'm going to continue with the trilogy, with the series or not. Um... Um, this is another author I heard about on BookTube. A lot of the British BookTubers I love watching, they talk about Sarah Waters. And some, not just the British BookTubers, but also some of the BookTubers that are more into the literary fiction. Um, they talk about how great of an author Sarah Waters is. So I decided, you know what, I need to get on this. I need, and I spotted her, some of her books, at the bookstore in the village. So I went ahead and bought this, and I started reading this, and I've not gotten very far, but, um, yeah, so, and I'm, I'm finding it very interesting so far, so I won't continue that one. Um, again, this was another one that Jennifer from Insert a Literary Pun talked about last year. She did, last March, she did a, read, a reading of the book all of March, because it's called Middle March. <laughs> so she was reading this book, so finally I decided to get around and buy it this book and I saw it at the used bookstore and you can tell it's a really battered copy. I mean this came out. This is no longer attached to the book. So um it's not the best quality book but it was a good it was a good price and everything so I just have to be really careful with it. Okay next one is another one I saw at the bookstore it was one they talked about on Goodreads I mean not Goodreads on booktube so I went ahead and bought it because at the bookstore the most expensive book is five dollars. So I went ahead and bought this, and it's one of those, it has like al an alternative format, so I figured um, it would be easy and quick to read. So I'm actually on chapter 4, I guess. Um, so I need to continue with this one as well. And then the last five books. This is Reagan from Peru's Projects talked about this book quite a bit. And said it was really good. She really loved it. So I saw it at the bookstore and went ahead and bought it. This was obviously at one point it was a library book. And the library gave it to them. So I'm going to read this. And then I'll get to, and then I will buy Stiletto if I really like this one. Um, I'm hope, oh, though I'm a very easy please person. So it won't be hard for me to like a lot of these books. Um, this next one, I decide I need to read some more. I need to read some Beauty and the Beast retellings. And the only one, the only retelling I had read was Akatar, Corn of Thorns and Roses. And I did not like the, how the beast figure turned out, spoiler alert, he turned out to not be that great of a guy. So I wanted to read more where the beast character does not screw up the relationship with the girl with the beauty character. Which is what happens in the second book of that series, where that book is from. So I got this one, and I had already read um, Cruel Beauty, um, and I really loved it. So now I'm going to read this one, and I believe this one has a sequel to it. So I'm going to read that one, and then I'll get the sequel. And then the last two, this last one, Roses, is a book that I got from a thrift shop um, by Liam Meacham, or Meckham, and I want to... I can't remember which booktuber talked about how loved this loves this book. Um, something pages, not pages and pens, but another booktuber with pages in their name. 
So I, they were the ones that talked about this, and I know there's a sequel to it, or a prequel. But I'm going to go ahead and read the. I obviously went ahead and read this one first. I'm only... I'm not halfway, but I'm getting to the halfway point. So I, I need to continue this one. This is a family saga story, you know, about this... That it said that the house, the plantation house that I live is cursed. And, you know, when you inherit the house, you become obsessed with the house. And it kind of ruins everything else for your other relationships. So, um, and, you know, it's about the... So, um, yeah, I want to continue this one as well. And then the last book is another book from a series. And I have the first book in the series. So I need to jump on reading the next, reading this book so I can get the next one as well. Um, so, yeah, and it's also a different type of fantasy. It's set in a not a European-inspired setting, but, um, I think it's a Rome-inspired setting, I think. So, I want to read this one. I, at first I thought this was the one they were making into a movie, but no, it's The Darkest Minds that's going to be made into the, into a movie. So, oh well. So, those are all the books, and I really hope, um, those are all the books I'm thinking about reading. Or that I need to read in the next two months. Um, and if you liked this this video, be sure to give a thumbs up. And click subscribe if you haven't already. I really would appreciate it. Um, to all my viewers that are already subscribed and watching my videos, then thank you for watching. And I love you guys. Bye.